Get you, get you, get you. Get you moving Monday. I'm Ryan Coleman of the Broward and the Miami Dade Real Estate Investors Association, also known as the Bria MC. Coming to you from the Bria and MD Ria headquarters. Hey guys, welcome back. It's another episode of Get You Moving Monday. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you got out there, knocked on some doors, talked to some potential motivated sellers, or even better yet, got a property in contract. Now, also I wanna make sure that you guys are getting out there and did, getting to your networking events as well. Did anybody get out and network this weekend? Did you talk to some other investors? And remember, networking doesn't mean just coming to like a Bria meeting or one of the other meetings. Networking could be, you know, calling a few people that you've actually met at a Rhea meeting and meet them for coffee. You know, talk to a couple other people, see what they're doing, see what type of marketing that they're using, what's working, what's not working. And speaking of getting together with groups of people, today's episode is dedicated to building the power team. All right, so building your power team, let's talk about the players first. So in your power team, and these aren't necessarily in order of importance, um, but even though getting money for your deals in order to flip your properties, remember, you can't do assignments of contracts on every single deal. These you know, pitches that I hear all the time on social media, learn how to flip properties, no money, no credit. Come on guys, you gotta put an earnest money deposit up and most of the time you want to expect that your profits are gonna be high enough that assignment of contracts not gonna work. So you're gonna need some hard money. So come to next one of the next Bria meetings. We got like four or five hard money lenders there all with different products. Uh, there's rehab prod products that they have. Uh, we have a couple hard money lenders that will actually put up 90% of the purchase and of the rehab costs as well. So getting a hard money lender is important for money. However, you also need to start thinking about other uses that your power team has. Hard money lenders also know other buyers because they're lending money to other wholesalers. They also know sellers. Hard money lenders will put money up, maybe let's say they put money up on a property and uh, the, the, the investor is doing a, a rehab on it. And let's say that they ran into some problems. There's something going on and that, that investor is not gonna be able to complete the rehab. Well, your hard money lender doesn't necessarily have to foreclose on that other investor. So maybe you talk to your hard money lender and maybe he calls you and says, listen, I've got this property. If you've got a buyer or somebody that you can wholesale this to, you know, I'll throw you, throw you a few bucks. And that would be a deal that you wouldn't necessarily have to come up with money uh, as well. And then also, your hard money lender can also provide your proof of funds. Remember, when you're making offers on MLS properties, specifically bank-owned properties, REOs, you're going to need a proof of funds. They're going to require that when you send in your initial offer. Now, probably the most integral part of your power team is your title company, which I also put here, short sale negotiator, okay? Our short sale negotiations happen through the title companies that we use. Most short sale negotiators are actually working for the title company because that's how they get paid. Yes, they do try to submit uh, in the very beginning of a short sale, um, you know, on the, the, the HUD statement, a fee for the short sale negotiations, but the bank doesn't always approve it. So the way that the short sale negotiator can get paid is that when you do your closing, especially your double closings with your title company, then that's how they can pay out your short sale negotiator. So, um, so finding a title company is also good for the obvious, your title and lien searches, which sometimes you may even wanna do uh, beforehand. Sometimes there are certain instances and situations where we get a property that we have under contract, but before we do anything else, we wanna do a quick title and lien search. We had a property in Fort Lauderdale that we needed to simply connect the property to the city sewer. Uh, they're, they're in Fort Lauderdale, they've changed over to city sewer system so you don't have a septic tank. And that was about $4,400. Well, before we spent the $4,400 because the buyer that we were selling it to was a buy and hold investor, but he didn't really have, he had handyman and things like that for doing quick patch and paint. And he was giving us a good price for the property, but he did not want to deal with having the city uh, come out to connect the city sewer. Of course, we have more experience with that type of thing. So what we wanted to do is title and lien search and just make sure that everything was gonna come back clean because if we were gonna have any issues, we didn't wanna pay the $4,400 um, and find out that there was gonna be other issues that would keep us from being able to flip that property. So title and lien searches, um, your short sale negotiations like we talked about, even legal advice. 
Uh, if your title company has an attorney, or a lot of times title companies have attorneys that they refer to, I know Independence Title doesn't have an in-house attorney, but you know Kevin Thatcher and his team have a multitude of, of um, uh, attorneys that they can get legal advice for you as well. But we are fortunate because we use also uh, in our uh, power team, one of our title companies is Firm Title. And at Firm Title, uh, there's a, an attorney that we're able to talk to, Craig Packer, we're able to, to talk to over there um, when we, in regards to foreclosures and probates and that sort of thing. We have an actual student deal going on right now uh, that is a probate situation. The husband owns the property, the wife is the one deceased, however, uh, because of the way that the will was written and everything else, um, we can very quickly get the husband on title so that that way he can convey um, the title of the property. He was told before by someone else that it was going to cost him like $5,000 to do probate. And even though the property is facing a foreclosure, he's not the mortgage holder, so he doesn't care. He was just going to walk away. Well, we found out that there's a little bit of equity still left in the property, uh, the way we structured the deal. And we found out uh, from our uh, legal advice from Firm Title and Craig Packer that well, we, it's only going to cost about 1500 bucks, and he can get the necessary documentation uh, and the motions filed with the probate courts so that the husband can transfer title and we can close up the property at the end of this month. So that's very important. Of course, your earnest money deposits, your EMDs, that's where you're going to put your consideration down to make that contract legal. Remember, we've talked about this in other episodes before. When you say that you want to flip properties with no money, not putting an earnest money deposit means that contract is actually not valid. According to federal law, in order for a contract to be valid, there has to be some type of consideration. And especially if you're making offers on listed properties, REOs and that sort of, uh, of the types of properties, they're going to require sometimes even upwards, if it's a Fannie Mae property, 10%. So if the offer is 180,000, you're going to have to come up with 18 grand for your earnest money deposit. So you want to have a good title company that will hold that in escrow for you. So that if there's any situations between you and the seller, if an arbitration or something comes up, you want to make sure that, that somebody's not going to take off with your earnest money deposit. Uh, also title companies, they do have buyers. Um, Independence Title has actually saved deals more than once for us and other investors. When the buyer or somebody falls through, um, they're able to actually find another buyer because remember, they're closing a lot of deals. Independence Title uh, closes about 100 deals a month and has outside investors and different people. So if your buyer falls through, maybe your title company can also help you out with the buyer. And of course, they also know sellers. You know, talk to your title companies when you're going to networking meetings and things like that. You know, ask your title company, hey, by the way, have you had anybody that's had issues on a property or they closed on the property and their buyer fell through, so maybe they need to sell it to somebody else. If you have a buyer that you brought to the table, even if you're only going to make a, a quick $1,000 referral fee, come on guys, that's, that's money. So you want to keep things moving. So buyers and sellers and hard money lenders. Again, Independence Title. We had a property that was closing. I'll never forget this, even though it was a few years ago. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and I got that horrible phone call at 12 o'clock noon that said, hey, listen, you know, I, I, the hard money lender that was um, going to be putting up the money for our buyer that we were wholesaling the property to, his hard money lender disappeared, MIA. I don't know what the story is behind that one. I don't want to know. But what was important that uh, Victor over at Independence Title, because they know other hard money lenders and they've already done all this work. Of course, they want your property to close too. They want to get paid. So he was able to connect with another hard money um, lender and we were able to get that deal closed by 2.30 that afternoon. So uh, that was bad news turned into good news. Now, uh, your contractor. Of course, for us, um, Carl Sheely of Piers Remodeling and Construction is our contractor. Um, we also use Gaia Inspection for their inspection reports. So if you've got a good contractor that can give you a nice detailed inspection report that has pictures of the property so that when you're doing negotiations on a bank owned property or even with just a regular seller, sometimes you need to negotiate a new price. You put it in contract for this price, you find out that your buyers are coming in you know, pretty much the same as of what you're going to pay for the property so there's no margin there. So sometimes you need to go back and renegotiate. Having an inspection report in hand is the ammunition sometimes that you need just to get the job done. 
Um, obviously, your contractor is the one that's going to be handling your rehab. You want to have a trusted contractor on your team that you can work with. And we even have one of our students, Tyra uh, Bacon. She's a smart cookie. And she has actually negotiated uh, with Carl Sheely and other contractors to get them to partner with her. You know, she says, well, listen, I only have X amount of capital to purchase the property. If she doesn't have enough money or if she has too many projects going on and there's another rehab she wants to do, but she doesn't have the money for the rehab, partner with your contractor and split it 50-50. As we say, guys, there's more than one way to get a deal done. Um, quick repairs. You know, sometimes you've got a property that just needs a quick repair. We had a property uh, that was down in South Miami in the hammocks, which is a great area, a very hot area that in about 2011 and 12 started really picking up pace and a lot of people started buying in that area. And we had a property that had uh, an issue with the front window. The, the window was put in, but was put in incorrectly. So there was still an open permit. It needed to have the Tapcon screws that put in, those blue screws that tell a, a buyer or a seller or a contractor that the window was actually permitted and done correctly um, as far as the, the, the current code and hurricane uh, preparedness. So you have to have Tapcon screws in your windows. So we had our contractor, Carl Sheely, he went to the property. Uh, he, he got the permit reopened, um, finished the window. We got the final inspection and we did all of that within a matter of three days because we had to get that property closed. Our buyer was returning to Russia and was taking his money with him. So that was very important. And again, your contractor has buyers and sellers. Guys, these contractors out there doing rehabs on other projects, you know, what if your contractor's doing a rehab on a project for some newbie investor who got in way over their head and, you know, didn't realize that, that they didn't have enough money to complete the rehab project. Maybe they just want to get rid of it. You come in and take over, uh, you know, with your contractor and uh, with the same contractor since they're already working on that rehab project. And, and then you can actually get the deal. So sometimes we've heard, you know, those situations have happened to us and to other um, uh, investors as well. And then also sellers, okay? Because if your contractor goes to do repairs after Hurricane Irma on a property and the homeowner says, okay, well, the insurance company paid for X amount and we got it repaired, but now, you know, say the contractor was over there and said, oh, by the way, your AC system is, you know, is about to go uh, it's, it's past its lifespan. Or maybe the repairs were on some windows, but the contractor looked up at the, at the roof and said, you know, you have some roof damage as well. And maybe the insurance company wasn't gonna cover everything. The homeowner now has a motivated reason to get rid of the property because it's in need of more repairs and they just want cash to get out. So sometimes you can get sellers through them as well. Now, this one I'm gonna put a question mark on, okay? And again, anybody that's uh, watching this, my viewing audience, um, don't take offense to anything that I say about real estate agents because I am actually a licensed real estate agent myself. I don't act as a realtor. I only play one on TV. Um, but realtors are something that can be of use to you, but we know, uh, and I can say this uh, with, with all my experience and dealing with a lot of different real estate agents here in South Florida, you've got about maybe 5% good real estate agents out there, the rest have no clue what they're doing. So you have to make sure that you really vet your realtor and find a good real estate agent. But again, no matter how good of, an, of a real estate agent that they are, they do come across buyers, they do come across sellers as well. When we send properties out on our list for WJL, which is our wholesale division, a lot of times our buyers come to us through real estate agents, which is fine. Add your commission on top and I don't care you know, what, what kind of commission that you're paying or you know, what, what the situation is between the real estate agent and the buyer, as long as I'm getting the price that I, that I want for the property. And then also sellers, you know, real estate agents, if they can to find a, a, an off-market property, then sometimes you can find um, sellers. You just need to make sure that your realtor understands what it is being an investor and what it means to get a property at a discount so that you can sell the property to someone else. A lot of times real estate agents are thinking about one thing, their commission, which is based upon a percentage of the sales price. So the higher the sales price, the more money they make. Uh, they can also list properties for you. If you or someone in your power team is not licensed, um, myself and my business partner, Anish Dave, we're both licensed so that when we do rehab projects, we can list the properties ourselves. We're with Charles Ruttenberg Realty. They only require $330 for us to list the property. So we've saved ourselves 3%. We have uh, two or three rehab projects that we're selling right now 
through our licenses that we just got done rehabbing. One is a student deal and one is our own internal deal. And we're selling both properties for over $300,000. So that's over $10,000 on each deal that we just saved ourselves. So um, having the listings done. Also properties, um, you know, sometimes your, your real estate agents, they might own properties themselves. They might have properties that they want to liquidate. Sometimes they own portfolios um, or you might actually find a buyer as your real estate agent. Okay, I know it's kind of a stretch, but you never know. Um, stranger things have happened. And everything that I'm telling you guys, anything that I talk about on Get You Moving Mondays is either personal experience myself or experience that me and my partnering investors have had. So uh, you can also get hard money through your real estate agents. Remember, realtors usually have, if they're a good real estate agent, especially if they're a realtor investor, they're gonna have a contractor, they're gonna have a title company, they're gonna have short sale negotiators, they're gonna be a hard money lender. And sometimes real estate agents can actually be that short sale negotiator. I've known a, a few real estate agents, uh, very few, but a few that are actually really good at negotiating short sales. Uh, and then of course, uh, if you've got a realtor on the team that can do a BPO for you, it kind of goes uh, with the, along with the inspection report. When you're making an offer on a listed property, like an REO, then sometimes if you're negotiating that price with them, uh, then you can have your real estate agent submit uh, a broker's price opinion, which is kind of like an appraisal, so that, that you can use that to uh, you know, argue the price and negotiate the price with the bank or the lender uh, or any other seller. Again, this could be a for sale by owner and you could have your real estate agent put together a BPO to show them these are what houses have been you know, sold in the neighborhood when your for sale by owner thinks that their property is worth about $100,000 more than what it really is. Now, for the most part, this is gonna complete your power team. However, you also wanna think about a few other things, okay? You wanna think about your marketing. Part of our power team is one of our corporate members, actually it's several of our corporate members, where we have a printer. So you have a really good printer that can get you really good pricing for your direct mailing campaigns, postcard campaigns, anything else that you need to make, flyers, door hangers, that sort of thing. And also, we use um, Sam over at Shop Savvy, and he's the one that actually takes our lead lists and sends out our direct mailing campaigns. Okay, so that's something else, you know, that I made at a, a note here uh, for marketing that you might want to consider adding to your power team is having the, the necessary people that will help you get your direct mail campaigns out there so that you can start getting some phone calls and start dealing with some motivated sellers. Again, one thing too to think about in building your power team is where do you go to source all of these people. Of course, you can obviously come to a, a Broward Real Estate Investor Association or a Miami-Dade Real Estate Investor Association meeting. Um, but there are many different ways. If you go to luncheons and go to other networking events, and by the way, anytime you even go to the building department, if you see someone there with plans in their hands or uh, you know obvious things like a hard hat on, they might be a contractor. Start getting used to collecting business cards from different people when you go different places. And by the way, in the areas that you're doing, your farm areas, in the areas that you're looking for investing, if you see some brokerage firm or something or a title company that's there, walk in, go and talk to the manager, exchange business cards, have a conversation with them. That is also considered networking. I think that people think you have to go to a RIA meeting to network. No, you should always be networking. You've heard the term uh, and the, the acronym ABC, always be closing, always be closing. So anywhere that you go, even if you're in the grocery store, I don't care if you're in the line at, at, at the bank, you should have business cards on you. You start talking to someone, someone's dressed in a suit, they got a briefcase, maybe they're an attorney, maybe they do real estate, maybe they don't. But again, you can always be networking with people and consistently building your power team. And now you know what time it is, uh, announcements. So just like the Thugs and Harmony song said, it's the first of the month. And you know what that means? It's the Bria and MD RIA meetings. Now, remember that we're changing the Miami-Dade Real Estate Investor Association meetings from Thursdays to Tuesdays now. So it's gonna be the first Tuesday of the month. So next Tuesday, March the 6th, is the Miami-Dade Real Estate Investor Association meeting. Next Wednesday, March the 7th, is the Broward Real Estate Investor Association meeting. The Miami meeting is at the Pullman Hotel, and that doors are gonna open at six o'clock. 
The BRIA meeting is at the Signature Grand. Doors will open at 5.30. Now, of course, we're gonna have our networking going on. We have our full um, spread of food that we put out for you so you can grab a bite to eat. Uh, there's gonna be a cash bar at both events. And the most important thing is our international speaker and educator, Sharif Medawar. Now, Sharif uh, came and was actually one of the diamond sponsors of our last year's expo. Uh, we weren't able to get him to uh, come and speak at the club. He was very busy last year. So we scheduled with him early and we finally got him here for 2018 in March. So he'll be here next week. And Sharif is going to educate you guys on how to make money in commercial real estate util utilizing hedge funds. He's gonna show you how to assign deals. That's right, how to assign your actual deals to hedge funds. And we're not talking about just small profits here. Some of these are very large profits, especially in commercial real estate. Um, also, he's gonna talk to you about how you can start a fund yourself. Starting with as little as $10,000, you can build your own hedge fund for people to invest in so that you can raise money publicly. Uh, and then also he's gonna talk about investing into the right fund um, that you can have long-term investments and long-term gains with. So that's gonna be some really good information at the next meetings. March 6th is the Miami-Dade, March 7th is the Broward. Don't miss those events. All right, boys and girls, well, that's all the time that we have for today's episode. I really appreciate you guys joining me on another Get You Moving Monday. I hope today I got you moving, start building your power team, and get out there and network. Make sure that you stay engaged. Of course, all of our upcoming events are on our websites for Bria.com and MiamiDadeRia.org. And go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, and also give us a like on Facebook. We have both the Broward and the Miami-Dade Real Estate Investor Association's pages on Facebook. Follow us there because we also will post uh, different tips and blogs, uh, different videos, and of course, all of our upcoming events as well. So. I hope to see you guys at our upcoming events at one of the meetings next week. And as I always say, in between now and the next time we see each other, every day is a new opportunity for your success.